market. We're heading home, we're making listed for the next the best you can get. Yeah. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Yeah, can I just get a regular latte as well? That'd be great. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. All right, so we uh, walked in. There were a couple of seats available, ordered our coffee, and then we turned around and they were gone. So, oh well, guess we've got some coffee and we're going for a walk. Okay, we found a spot. We're gonna see if we can work from here. Oh, this is a sick diner. Old school as. Okay, so we're here at Waverly Diner over near Waverly Place in West Village. Old school diner. I'm guessing this is where the wizards went. What are we going for? Bacon and eggs? Wine at 10 a.m. in the morning? Let's go. Oh well, yeah, I could do that. I'm gonna go grilled cheese with bacon and tomato. Maybe just the grilled cheese by itself. Uh, could I please get a grilled cheese? Just with tomato is fine. All right guys, we've got the code diner sesh going on this morning. So this morning, what I wanna be doing is essentially adding to the new subscription game that I was working on in the last video. I already told you guys, I am taking a slight break from Repuber at the moment to focus on the new Discord specific full stack product that I wanna launch alongside the Discord at 30K subs, that is. So a couple of basic things to sort out first. I need to add some extra routes, I need to add a split view with a preview, some fields to update some data on the back in and also a discord connection so I have been looking at lemon squeezy as a potential integration for this new full stack application but the problem is they don't really support marketplace models which is something that I really really want to add in I don't just want to make this product for me and me only to use alongside of discord I want people like yourself and anyone else who's creating content or building a community to be able to use this application as well lemon squeezy yes it's cool they act as like a merchant of record and they can do all your taxation and everything for you on behalf of you. Stripe doesn't really do that but Stripe offers the full suite of tools for like marketplace transactions and allowing you to come in to my application, host your own payments, like bring stuff in, do all sorts of like really cool stuff. So anyway, more details to come soon about the add-on building. We're just going to crack on. So yeah, looks like Stripe's the go. One of the core things when it comes to building features and especially in a way that's like scalable for a development flow is to prioritize really, really, really well. And so when I say prioritize, I mean like if you've got a notion board and it's got all your tasks for your project and you've got them like listed for the next like week full of work, how do you know which ones that you should work on first? This really comes from one of the comments that I saw recently on the channel where someone said, how do I keep motivated? How do I stay like focused and on track? And I think when you understand where you're going, it can feel really overwhelming because you're like damn I've got a lot of tasks that I need to do in order to get this from like literally just negative one to zero before even getting zero to one and that overwhelm can slow you down and the momentum of actually moving forward as a developer can actually feel really hard sometimes what I like to do is the night before I go out to a cafe or diner like this or just before I even get started coding at all I start thinking about what are the key kind of features that I want to get done by the end of the day and then I just jump to notion in my Kanban board in my like to-do column and I just start doing them in sequential 
sequential order of what would need to be done. For example, in this case, I need a way to create a new page for this certain application I'm building. Then I need a way for the user to visit a route that allows them to edit the page. And so that means I'm gonna need endpoints to pull data for editing the page. I need to know if they're authenticated or not, whether they can even access that data or that page, that authenticated page. I need them to be able to add values and send them up to the cloud. So there we go, there's another endpoint. We need them to be able to update details and send it up to my backend. You can see how you can just sequentially go through the entire flow of how the user would actually use the app. And that's how you can slowly start building out your Kanban board and all the tasks that you need to do to get things done. It really isn't rocket science. It's more just like walk through the user journey and you will figure out tickets to slowly move forward ahead in your workflow. So if I can say anything and you can take anything away from this video, it is just take away all the pressure from thinking about getting from your current position to a deployed production ready product. Just start working in small segments. And this is actually what professional top tier companies do and like a product manager's job in real life is to really prioritize and get an entire concept of something they want to get out in production and chop it down to small bits and then assign it to all the developers. You just essentially do that, but you do it for yourself and you just do it in a really efficient, meaningful way so that you can move forward, you can see progress, you can feel progress, and more codes just getting pushed up, getting you closer to your goal of actually launching whatever you're building to production. Don't let yourself get overwhelmed, just start getting tickets down and then you can move forward. Anyway, we're gonna keep moving. Oh yeah, feeling fueled, feeling ready to smash more lines of code. All right, I think, logically, we're heading home, we're making more coffee, and we're diving even deeper, deep focus mode. Let's get some work done. Got a couple of notes here for this afternoon. Number one, the user needs to be able to visit the edit page for the dashboard page they're trying to design, theme, customize, and ship out to the world. That's number one. I'm already halfway through there where there's like a dynamic route that the user can visit. They hit the edit endpoint, returns whether they're authenticated and allowed to touch it and receive the information and make changes and such. That's the first step, that's done. Number two, we need to return the edit page DTO. So that's a new DTO I need to define in the Nest.js project. Number three, we need a split view dashboard design editor. I have never created a design editor for like dashboard customization. So that's gonna be fun. Number four, a component to add specific features. That's gonna be an interesting one. And finally, number five, a provider connection. So you can connect to all these third party services. So yes, that's the plan. We're cranking hard. I've got my Notion doc ready to go, full of everything in my Kanban board. If you're wondering, desk is from Vernal. Notepad is from GroveMade. Pen is from Grove made as well. Grove made again for this thing. Beautiful. And MacBook Pro M2 Pro chip, 16 gigabytes of RAM. Night Owl is my theme on VS Code. I feel like these are just the most common comments that I get down below. So I'm answering them in one place for you. If you're wondering as well, I'm now filming on the Sony 20 millimeter 1.8 G Master lens. Beautiful lens. It's very different from this, this lens that I normally use, which is the Sony E 1.8 11 millimeter. Now the thing about that lens, it's really, really wide and it looks like this which is super sick, you can see, super nice, beautiful and wide, but sometimes when I move around too fast, you see these little black things on the side of the, oh, it's not even doing it right now. Of course it doesn't do it when I'm trying to get the example. Anyway, two lenses that I work with, 1.8 20 millimeter Sony G Master lens and the 1.8 11 millimeter Sony E mount lens. All my tech, if you're wondering, camera included, microphone, everything is in the description below, so go check it out. As well as all the links to all that stuff on my desk that I just showed you. Last thing, what the heck, you guys have absolutely blown up this video, ranking at a one out of 10, which is like the best you can get on your channel. So, I mean, I don't know what's going on. You guys are just going nuts the subs are going through the roof we only just hit like 25k the other day now we've just hit 28,000 what the heck is going on shout out to you guys thanks for subbing and uh if you're a dev 
you should subscribe too. In fact, I'm seeing lots of people who aren't devs subscribing. Welcome to you guys especially. All right, so the plan for the rest of the day, we're gonna keep cranking out some more lines in this build. We're gonna have fun, we're gonna keep building, and you're gonna keep watching. Let's go! Mm -hmm.